Can you guys Hello? talk to us? Ah, now we hear you. Perfect. Yeah. So just published in endoscopy last month, curriculum for, um, for, for, for EMR, but it also holds true for the majority of polypectomy and we'll highlight the differences throughout today. Um, and uh, one of the key recommendations is be good at colonoscopy before you start trying to do polypectomy. Um, so just to make the observation a few minutes ago, and, and I think when you look back on it and um, play it back, you'll, you'll see that this is the okay. case. You said that you can complete colonoscopy more quickly with more practice and doing lots of numbers. And I would say you can do colonoscopy quickly if you know what you're doing. Um, I think I said the words conscious competence as well. Okay, that. I do apologise. I must have missed that then. But, um, but I, so, I, so I have to say, I fully agree with that statement. If I had yeah. simply said more numbers, then I would, have, yeah. would, would not support that at all. I think that no, no. you can no. do as many numbers as you want. We've all seen that, right? And, and, not, and just do, you know, reinforce bad, bad practice. Yeah. So absolutely, you, you absolutely have to understand what you're doing. And hopefully in this little uh, nugget that we've shared with you here, um, we have illustrated uh, some of that. But, but uh, John or Roland, could you please provide a deconstruction of what was happening there and, and the so, reason why Lobka succeeded where Valerie didn't? Okay, can I, can I just make, make the first point, David? I, I think being able to get to the CECAM comfortably and quickly is terribly important because it, it just gives you so much more time to inspect the bowel properly and yes. to also remove the polyps. Um, safely. So um, I think being able to, to intubate the colon quickly and safely and comfortably is, is really, really important. I think what happened, so what I saw happened when Lobka uh, put the patient on the left, uh, she actually put a lot more um, gas in the colon. And if you play the video back, her whole tip control was much um uh better than Valerie's dare I say she she was not moving around so much um she'd slow down and I think but I'm not absolutely sure she put a lot of anticlockwise torque on um, mm -hmm. and that resulted in lifting the mid transfer up she had a good luminal view because the patient was on their left and then I think she went in with some anticlockwise torque I'm not sure whether there was compression or not. So there essentially, no, no compression, essentially yeah. she was getting a better luminal view with the left position, which which does happen. Um, and she was maintaining a short scope with uh, loads of anticlockwise talk. I mean, that was very clear, wasn't it? So the scope guide image immediately transformed from that kind of real deep transverse dip to a very short scope position. Uh, was no pressure required to go round. And it, I think indeed the combination of anticlockwise talk and uh, putting gas in and the left position um, uh, is, is is what was key there. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you've got pull back, right? Plus anti-clockwise torque, which is well, what people think about to deal with the splenic flexure. But then to get rid of this problem, she then put on clockwise torque, uh, right tip, and importantly, use suction and tip control. And I would say the biggest difference between the two were there was air, there was obviously some skill involved. It was much slower, and the tip control was there. And I, watching what Lob did, this is what she did. It is a I call this the Valori hepatic because we work. We spent a long time working out why this occurs, and I think yeah. it's a typical typical example of that. Uh, shows definitely. Uh, well, just pick you up on one thing, John. You've put air, slow tip control. I agree with all that. But what skill? Or is um, it all those? Yeah, it's it's knowledge. It's knowledge. It's having the knowledge and being able to execute the knowledge, really leading to the tip control. So I I did another thing, David, when you were chatting away. I came up with this right. So some basic principles in, in, in polypectomy technique. The endoscopist needs things on the left-hand side, right? And I wrote in what allows you to, to, to achieve this, the tip control. And that is having a knowledge of the solutions to the problems that you're facing within the, the colon, having the ability to go slow, knowing when to use suction, when to use tip. and what, So these, this is uh, the solutions to an algorithm. Uh, and you either have got to have it subconsciously or consciously, and I think Lobka clearly has it in abundance. Um, and, uh, yeah, we can come back to this.
So what current would you use, John, now? So we are about to cut this off with Endicott Q effect two. I, I wouldn't use that now. Okay, and um, rationalize or deconstruct that? Uh, because I think uh, what you require here is transection and coagulation of the vessel running through the center of the stalk. And I think mm -hmm. using that setting, which is a, a blended current using cut and coag, you run the risk of transecting the stalk too quickly and causing bleeding. I know you put an injection in there, but but I, I, so I would use um, uh, forced coagulation, 30 watts effect mm -hmm. one, and I would yeah. just squeeze, continually squeeze through. And what you affect is you get a, a coagulation current and you will transect the stalk and you will seal the vessel. Okay, so we have forced coagulation, uh, 30 watt uh, peaked uh, or capped at 30 watts. Um, in the Erby via three, that equates to 1.5. Okay, so, and what's the instruction um, to Valerie in terms of what to do with the snare, John? So she's going to close it, but how is she going to, because she's got it in her hand, so she's going to do it. Okay. Uh, so we can discuss this. So it needs to be tight before you touch the pedal because you're going to have coaptation at the site where you've got the, the snare strangulating the stalk. And the tighter you are, the higher the current. And the reason you want a high current density is because you want to both transect and seal the vessel without causing carbonization of the um, snare itself. So it needs to be nice and tight. And then when you put your foot on the pedal, firstly, you keep your foot on the pedal and you slowly close the snare fully. So you have a constant pressure going through as you put your foot on the pedal. So once you hear the noise, that's when you start closing. So you squeeze the tight, put your foot on the pedal, continue squeezing until, until the polyp drops off. And it's a slow, constant closure. And it should be, for a stalk of this size, it'll be maybe three. One, two, three, you'll be through. You'll probably be through on two, actually, because it's very small. There you go.